In a lot of my videos, I talk about a thing called pix landing. But what is this mysterious thing, this phenomenon called pix landing actually? Well, guitar champion, I'm Sin Hombach back from my practice cave. And welcome to today's video where we're going to find out what is actually the thing called pix landing. Here we go. First of all, we have to name the person that made pixelanting actually a thing. A Troy Grady from Cracking the Code. This is the big main theme from his channel and from his website Cracking the Code, which is really, really interesting, really, really worth to check out. So, I highly recommend to everybody, like I always say, go check out Troy Grady and Cracking the Code. The videos from him are just pure S tier awesomeness kind of videos, really really great stuff, really great material. But I can understand some people are saying well it's a lot of information in, in those videos and can somebody break this down and Ben Eller did some really great videos and now some people of my community have asked me what is this thing called pixelanting, could you explain it? So I try in this video to explain what is pixelanting in my personal kind of view and in my understanding what I what I think is pick slanting and how I use it and how I try to develop this into my playing and to get better at picking. So let's take a close up to my right hand. Let's find out what is actually pick slanting. So first of all, why am I telling you this? Because there will be coming some really cool picking videos on my channel here in the next few uh, weeks. And I think it's really important to clear what pick slanting actually means because I want to use this uh, idea of pick slanting a lot now to help you to get faster and to have more precision and stuff like this. So it's really important to know what pick slanting is. Okay, now let's begin with the pick slanting. So let's say we have three positions how we can angle our pick. We have the neutral position where we are parallel to the string like this. Then we have the downward pick slanting where the heavy side, the thick side, this one here from our pick is facing down and the tip of the pick is facing up. And we have the upward pick slanting, the opposite of it, where the thick side of the tip is facing up but the tip of the pick is facing down. All right, so why do we need this or why do we need to know in which situations uh, which pixel is better and stuff like this. So let's assume we want to go from the G to the B string. We are using alternate picking here, no economy picking, so no sweep picking, uh, but we want to use alternate picking. So we want to play a downstroke on the B string, a uh, G string. And now we want to play an upstroke on the B string. For example, when we want to, for example, when we are playing a scale like this transition from the G to the B string. All right. Now, what do we have when we are having the neutral position and want to go with a downstroke to an upstroke on a string above our string? Okay. Let's see. Well, the tip of the pick is now in between the G and the B string. And if we want to go to the B string and we want to pluck the B string with the up stroke, then we have to move the pick now around the B string to get the up stroke. So, what will happen when we are doing downward pick sending? Ooh, now we are clearly trapped between the G and the B string because my pick is now resting on the, G st on the B string definitely trapped here in between and it's a lot of movement and a lot of time um, that will cost when we want to go from the or around the B string to play the B string with an upstroke. So now but what will happen when we're doing upward pick slanting? Oh look here our tip is now free it's in the air it's a little bit easier or what I say a little bit easier much easier to pluck the B string with an upstroke now. Again, when we have the downward pick slanting, stuck between the two strings. When we have the upward pick slanting, free and much easier to pick now the next note on the B string. OK, 
okay now, but what if we have an up stroke on the G string and we want to reach the B string with a down stroke? So let's check out upward pick standing here. Oh, after the up stroke, we are stuck now in between the D and the G string. Okay, so let's try out downward pick standing. Ah, the tip of the pick is free. And we can easily hit the B string with a down stroke. Super easy. So, and those are the reasons why we always should check out um, pick slanting because when we want to reach another string or want to go to another string, it's sometimes a bit easier or a lot easier to have the upward pick slanting and sometimes it's easier to have the downward pick slanting. So much for the theory, let's check out some examples. One example is when we want to play a scale and we want to play that scale with no repetition in between the scale, we want to play it from start to beginning, like for example the C major scale. Let's play the C major scale from C to C. So now, of course, there are situations where we only use downward pick slanting and where we only use upward pick slanting. For example, when we have an even number of notes per string, because we need to change from downward, or we need to change the pick slant when we have an uneven number of notes per string, because then our picking direction will change as well. But when we have an even number of notes per string, the chick, uh, the the chicking, the picking direction stays the same. For example, when we play a really classical shred leg like this one here. Then we have six notes per string. Uh, the picking direction is always down, up, down, up, down, up, down on the next string. Down. So the first note on the next string is always a down pick. So downward pick slanting here. The last pick uh, the last note of the string is an up. Um, pick and the first one is the down pick so downward pick slanting is your way to go. Why? Let's check out. Let's start on the B string for a demonstration purpose. When, you have the, when I have the downward pick slanting my, the tip of the pick is free now and can easily hit the next string with a down stroke. When I we would use when I would use the upward pick slanting now uh, sorry the tip of the pick is stuck. It's trapped between the G and the B string. So, downward pick slanting. And of course, there are also situations where we only use upward pick slanting. For example, when I play three notes on the high E string and then six notes on the other strings. Six notes equal an uh, even number of notes per string and therefore we can stay with this upward pick slant direction. Why upward? When we are starting with the three notes per string on the high E string, the last note is a um, down, down stroke and to get from down stroke to an up stroke to the next string, upward pick slanting is our way to go because then we aren't trapped in between two strings. Asse. See, I'm always free with the tip of my pick when it comes to the string change. Free. Free. Let's change the pick slant just for a demonstration purpose to see what kind of problems we would have when we would use downward pick slanting here. See, now my tip of the pick is here and I want to go here. So, a lot of movement, a lot of time will pass. Not really good and efficient, but I want to play it fast. So, I hope you liked this little lesson about pick slanting. This little video, I hope it will enlighten you and you will now try out the upward pick slanting and the downward pick slanting, all that fun stuff. If you like this video and if you want to thank me for this video, then please hit the subscribe button, click the like button, and comment or follow my channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook, stuff like this. So much for this video. I hope you had a really great time with it and I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers so far and stay progress. Bye.